Hey everyone, it's BDC. Thanks for checking out this video on my channel. Uh, today I'm doing a short video on a uh, version of CO18 Resistance Plus that I made called CO41 Day of Infamy, and uh, it's based on the uh, Wake Island map. Um, I can't remember who it was who made this. I have it listed here in credits. Huba Bobui. I don't know if I'm uh, if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not. Um, anywho, um, I will get his uh his workshop entry on uh, steam linked into the uh description on this video so you can go check out the map yourself um i started this mission maybe a year and a half ago and um i wanted a uh, small version of the the larger resistance mission i've been working on and uh i saw this uh this wake island map and i just fell in love with it and i uh, said you know what that would be a perfect spot to do something that's um uh, CSAT Pacific, you know, Apex uh, assets based. So I decided to whip it up. Uh, this mission, as compared to the other ones, takes about two days to complete with a good team. Uh, we usually play with anywhere from four to six, uh, sometimes seven or eight guys. And um, I think there's a total of 30 markers on here, 30 conquest points. Uh, a lot of them are pretty small. Uh, they're not really hard to take. And by the time you work your, uh, work your uh, team over, uh, to the main airfield and you've already taken that and you've already gotten uh, air superiority and you've already got a good amount of assets and things like that. So um, the general play style is the same um, uh, as the other uh, resistance missions, but it's heavier on ground combat. There's a whole lot more in the way of aircraft that you have to deal with and a lot less in the way of, uh, of uh, ground vehicles like tanks and stuff like that. And, um, that's kind of like an immersion thing. I tried to uh, stick with the, uh, the theme of what would make sense on here, um, a, uh, an island that's, that's taken. You know, would they have the logistics to be able to move a ton of armor on it and stuff like that? You know, what would be more reasonable to encounter? So, uh, anyways, I mentioned uh, this is uh, Apex based. Um, I don't think you technically need Apex to play this, um, but I'm not sure how it would work with using their weaponry because I did stick to uh, did stick to to doing that. So, we have all the uh, the tropical versions um, of uh, of everything, the optics, the the weaponry, all that kind of stuff that you start with. Uh, squad size, I want to say it's 12. I might be mistaken. It may be 10. <laughs> I haven't looked at this in a while. Um, there are some AI guys. Uh, out here at uh, HQ uh, area, if you want to call this headquarters, that you can grab um, and add to your squad if you only have a few guys and want to try it out. Um, let's see. I uh, don't know if I mentioned this yet or not, but um, this uh, this mission is fully configurable. You can rebalance just damn near everything with it. It's also ace compatible. You have to uh, flip on a couple of switches uh, to do that. It'll change the player status bar on the bottom, and then um, it will also... Um, it will also enable uh, the ace medical and all those things that you can use uh, within the game. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, this requires a dedicated server to run, and I run it on um, three cores of one uh, server CPU. So I run the server process itself, and then I have two headless clients on it. And the way I've, I've got it over here, it's all pre-configured to where certain AI get offloaded to certain headless clients and things like that. Um, it's a small map. There's not a whole lot of AI out here. It runs very, very well, very, very fast. Um, uh, most everybody has really high FPS for quite a while. Um, you can play this one for several hours before you have to uh, have to reset the server. But it's okay because everything on here is persistent. Uh, your characters, vehicles, assets, anything like that. Um, provided that those assets are within markers that have been cleared to green, like this one right here. Um, so that that is uh, that's one thing I do different than the uh, regular resistance that I have on Altus, where you don't have to build um, FOBs, garrisoned FOBs, and stuff like that. Uh, this one's a much more uh, thinned out one, um, and since there's a lot less in the way of assets that get tossed around on the map, um, just because it's a lot smaller, is um, uh, um, I use the uh, green markers as um, as an asset control for making stuff persistent. So. Like in this case of this uh, of this radar installation over here, if I uh, went over here and let's say cleared it out, killed all the bad guys, they're all dead. Let's see what this looks like with the NV off. All the bad guys are dead, and um, you know now we start uh, building up stuff. We get the little base builder box or or whatever. I think there's one sitting over there in that corner. Yeah, you build up a couple more towers or whatever, then you can turn this into a base. And if you need to reset the server, uh, any any assets, uh, cargo boxes, vehicles, air, both air and ground, anything like that will be persistent inside of here. 
So for some reason, if you have to reset the server and come and uh, and uh, bring it back up for whatever reason, say um, how Arma just likes to sometimes run worse and worse <laughs> over a long period of time and just want to bounce it and clear it out, then everything will be uh, back here again. Um, that's honestly the main reason why I initially started working on uh, the original Resistance mission was because it's such a massive uh, campaign style type thing, but it lacked uh, persistency. And so that was one of the first things I did when I got a hold of it and rewrote it was to uh, get that working and uh, made it uh, marker based. So normal resistance, blue markers are the uh, persistent ones, but on these smaller ones that I have, these smaller, uh, these smaller missions with these smaller maps, I make all the green markers persistent. So um, it makes it, I guess, a little bit easier to deal with. But again, this is more of a, um, you know, move through it at a good steady pace and you know, uh, take the uh, whole island after a couple of days rather than spending a month building up, you know, a huge armory and all these vehicle assets and stuff like that. So, uh, anywho, um, this is uh, CO41 Day of Infamy. It's uh, on Wake Island. It's one of the derivatives of uh, CO18 Resistance Plus. Um, I don't know if there's anything else uh, to mention on here. Um, Hope you guys like the video. Um, if any of you guys are uh, interested in this, um, feel free to uh, leave a comment or ask a question or something in, uh, uh, down below, and um, I'll do my best to answer it um, and then maybe give you a uh, way of uh, getting it because I don't have it up on the Steam Workshop yet, but once I do, I'll place it down in the description. Uh, if you would, please hit that like button and please sub. Um, I'm adding com content all the time. A lot of armor stuff. Uh, we have a, a good group here that... Uh, that uh, we play a lot of different missions with and we have a, a really good time at it and all that. So, uh, anywho, um, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate you watching the video and uh, have a good one.